Welcome. In this video, we take a look at my board game collection and which games might be leaving. So I recently mentioned that with all the Kickstarters I've been backing, it's time to cull the collection to make some room for incoming games. So let's take a quick look at my collection and which games are potentially on the chopping block. Just a note, I love deck building games, dice rolling games, and games with miniatures, so don't judge. Why call you ask? Well, I've got a limited amount of space to keep my collection in. So looking around, I've got one, two, three, four, five shelves around here, uh, about four full shelves worth of games. Uh, so my criteria for games leaving is one, I didn't like it. Two, haven't played it in a long time and I don't see that happening. Or three, it's been replaced by another game. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting on the bottom shelf, we've got some D&D &D role playing stuff, a little bit of Star Wars. So I don't mind being a player, being a DM is not my thing. So these books may or may not survive much longer. Then moving on over, see I've got a stash of sleeves. Like I've said before, I've stockpiled some fantasy flight supply sleeves, but moving into game Genix and Dragon Shields. Then moving on up, get some games here. In the big black box, we've got Shadowrun, worker placement game. Enjoy that one. Last Night on Earth with the Growing Hunger expansion. Very thematic game. Flying Frog is good at doing that. Then we have Ethnos, good area control game. New York Slice, very thematic. And I have a deep love of pizza. Hell Hydra, Alien Frontiers, and Terrors of London, another deck building game. Then moving over, you can see I do have a little bit of shelf space. Eminent Domain is a good two to four player deck building game. And then for dice rolling, we've got Star Trek, Las Vegas, and the Justice League Hero Dice game. I think I'm just keeping that because it's got Superman on it. Also have Dragonheart, which is a two player game, one of the very few games my wife would play, and then Seven Wonders Duel. Then moving up, the big ugly white boxes there is my Marvel Champions collection. So I'm into two boxes now. One's a three road cardboard box and the other is just a two row. Then we have Warp's Edge, the uh, Virus Invasion Expansion, Cartographers, and The Crew, which has been getting a ton of play. Then moving on over to Aeon's End. There's my collection there. And hiding behind some tokens is my Love Letter Games. So loved Craft Letter, which I think is the best one. Batman Love Letter is definitely the one I get played the most, and The Hobbit. And The Few and the Cursed has quickly turned into one of my favorite adventure type games with a little bit of deck building in it. But I like the adventure theme mainly. Then I just have a box that I take with me to game nights, full of dice, tokens, and some wipes for my glasses and meeples and pens and pencils. Then moving up to the next shelf, Cthulhu Death May Die, probably my favorite miniature game at the moment. I also have Reich Busters, which I had a ton of fun with, just don't know how long that's going to stay in my collection. Then Enchanters, this is the Overlords expansion with everything before that. I've got another Kickstarter coming with that. Then moving on over. Cards Against Star Wars, because my daughter and I have the same sense of humor. Arkham Horror, the card game. So I started that. I've got another person in my game group that's been collecting that, so I'm still playing a lot of that, just someone else's version. Then some smaller games. I have Arkham Horror Final Hour. Good game. Uh, don't know how much longer it's going to stay in the collection, though. Heroes of Terranoth is another good one. Blood Bowl Team Manager. Another thing about the reason why I keep games is the memories it brings back. And I got this at Gen Con, the one and only I've been at. I think I picked up Rune Age there also. Another fantasy flight game. I think this is one of their only real deck builders they've done. And of course, Elder Sign. Then some more dice rolling game with Shadowrun Encounters, Zombie Dice, Set of Watch. And deck building Star Realms. And moving on up, got a lot of my smaller games, most of them just quick dice and card games. Deck Builders, Dark Gothic, Nightfall is a really fun one that I enjoy, just the way that you have to chain all your cards together in that. And it's more than a deck builder, it's more of you've got to do some negotiation in, in that game, even though it's not in the rules. Then Kingdom Builder, Seven Wonders, Terraforming Mars, and Suro. And moving on over. 
We've got Marvel Splendor, which I've replaced the original Splendor with. Wingspan with its expansion. Sagrada, like I said, I like dice games. A la Cats. I like keeping at least one of different genres, so that's my polyhedral tile placement game. Then Dice Games, King of Tokyo. That's probably going to be a lifelong game I keep. Then these three from the Rising Zero series, Batman Who Laughs, Thanos, and Star Wars. Two of these are probably going to get the chopping block at some time. I just don't know which one's going to win that battle because, well, DC, Marvel, Star Wars, that's my trilogy. And then we move up to the ceiling. Mythic Battles Pantheon. It's a game I played just a couple times. I'm not huge on two-player games, but the miniatures and the gameplay I really enjoy, so I think I'm keeping that if nothing, if for nothing but the minis itself. Then Batman Gotham City Chronicles. Really fun game. It's hard to explain it out though. There's just so many abilities. Sometimes it's just difficult to bring out to new players, but it's Batman. The components in miniatures are awesome. I think that's another game I'll be keeping forever. Then on top, D6. Dungeons, Dudes, Dames, Danger, Dice, and Dragons. One of many games I need to get back to the table again, so not sure how long that will be in my collection, but it's definitely something I want to get back to the table some more. Then moving over, we've got Conan, which was basically version one of that. Then up top, Breaking Games, Dwellings of Eldervale. I was fortunate enough to get a copy of that in retail. Of course, it's sold out now, so there will be a playthrough coming of that. So just spoiler, I'm not a huge fan of worker placements most of the time, but I do love that game. Then Western Legends, Scythe, Eclipse, Second Dawn for the Galaxy, Clash of Rage, fun little area control game, and then the big box of Hero Realms on top. Then moving over across the room, from the top of the shelf to the ceiling, we have the Revised edition of Flying Frog, Shadows of Brimstone, those two core boxes. And of course, I've got that broke out into a small white box, all the tokens and those tackle boxes and the miniatures up top. Maximum Apocalypse, Legendary Edition, another game I need to get to the channel. So far, really enjoying that. Then over in the other top corner, we've got Grim Force, another game I need to get played more. Star Wars Rebellion. Probably going to leave the collection even though it's a great game. It's two player, takes a while, just not something I typically get to the table. Lord's Waterdeep, really shocked with that. Didn't expect much from that company from Wizards other than Magic the Gathering, but turned out to be one of my favorite worker placement games. Then we have Robo Rally and League of Legends, two of the best programmable games in my opinion. And then Cyclades, another area control game. Moving down this shelf. Get my camera arm out of the way. Alter Quest, another game I need to get to the table more. It's just a table hog and just haven't had time to get it there. Marvel United, still waiting on the rest of those components or expansions to come. Waterdeep, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. A nice dungeon crawl. Blood Rage and Massive Darkness. Soon to be replaced by Massive Darkness 2. And then this shelf. These are games that are probably going to be leaving real soon. Dinogenics. Very thematic, worker placements. Just isn't a game that I think is going to hit the table much with me and my group. Detective Club, it's a good party game. Uh, my group just does not play that many party games. Clank is a, probably the last in that group that's going to leave. Good deck building game, like that one. Heroes of Dominaria, I think that was a good area control game. Just didn't get any traction. Lost Cities, D-Day Dice, and yes, Friday. It's a solo deck builder and I just did not enjoy it. And then I still, one of those shames, game still in the shrink wrap. And Mystic Veil, vale, it's another really good game. I might be holding on to this one quite a while too, but it's probably on the chopping block. Then here I pulled this from where I normally stash it. This is my Marvel Legendary Collection. This is one of those games that I think I will be keeping forever. So moving on to another shelf. My new X-Men Mutant Insurrection. The more I play this, the more I'm enjoying it. But I do recommend it with three or more players. Dune Imperium. Still need to get that to table more with multiplayers. Lord of the Rings. Another scenario-based game I need to get played more. Space Base. Love this game. 
uh, Favor of the Pharaoh, another dice rolling game, and Merchants of Venus, just because of Eric Summer at the Dice Tower. It's a very random game, but it is a fun pick up and deliver game. Then moving up, Lords of Hellas, another fun area control game I need to get played more often. Small World of Warcraft, this is now my small world area control game. Harry Potter, the deck building game. While as much as I do love the cooperative nature of Marvel Champions, this is a great cooperative game, and I'm not even that huge of a Harry Potter fan, but this has been going well in my group. Then Dice Forge, real neat dice rolling game where you kind of build your own dice. Abyss, Nexus Ops, another area control, and the Adventurers, Pyramid of Horus, a good push your luck Indiana Jones style game. Then my stash of FFG games with Battlestar Galactica. That is probably a game that I will never get rid of just because of the memories of it. This is just the box for Marvel Champions. It's empty. All my cards are in the other box. Star Wars Outer Rim. I really do hope they come out with expansions for this. Really fun pick up and deliver game. Then we have Eldritch Horror and Arkham Horror. Then going to the roof on this side. So here I've got the just the movie version of Legendary in this box. Lord of the Rings, DC deck building game. Got those here. Pathfinder core set, Apex and Moonrakers. And hanging up top is Blood Bowl. And I've kind of tried to trick this out a little bit. So bring the camera down. So I got this metal box. Magnetize all my teams there. I like playing this every couple weeks. It's not a game I like to play all the time, but pretty neat. Just magnetize the bottom, get in the metal shelf, and you're good to go. And then my last section of shelving, we've got Zombicide Black Plague with the Green Horde. And soon it's going to have some undead or alive along with it. Then Dice Throne Adventures with Season 1 and Season 2, Rising Sun, and then Thunderstone Quest all the way on the bottom and hasn't been played. That is another table hog and takes a lot of time to get done. So that is a quick look at my game collection and the games on the chopping block. We'll see if I can actually follow through with those. I uh, did fail to mention I also rent a locker at my game store. It's about three foot by two and a half foot by four foot. And that is where the rest of my Shadows of Brimstone collection is, along with one other game, uh, Shadow Hunters, which is a pretty good version of a deduction game. Uh, unfortunately, you tend to end up hurting your partner because it takes a while to figure out who they are. Um, so that will be it for this video. As always, I hope you liked everything you saw here. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.